Hello, good morning, and thanks for joining for our first of three webinars this month. Uh, this morning, we have what I think is a very important topic, key tools and techniques to rapidly identify your innovation opportunities. A lot of you may be really keen to adopt new technologies or to introduce automation into your organization, something to give you an edge or a competitive advantage, but you might not know how to start, where to start, or even what opportunities there are. So we have IMR's Director of Robotics and Automation, Ken Horn, and IMR's Industrial Solutions Architect, Adrian Hovenden, to help you understand how to identify these opportunities. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please use the question and answers function at the bottom of your screen, and we'll get to them at the end. First up, welcome, Ken. Uh, thank you, Gary. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, let's go along on this sunny Friday morning. Um, um, as uh, Gary mentioned, we're going to talk through a few um, a few tools and techniques that have uh, proven successful over the last number of years here in IMR in, in helping us, I suppose, validate uh, the direction of some of our work in order to maximize the, uh, the probability of success coming out of um, the, the, let's say, the more standard um, project framework. Um, so um, my name is Ken Horan, and I'm joined today by Adrian Hovenden. Good morning, everyone. Yeah. Okay, so let's jump into it. We've got about 20 minutes here. Um, and so we're, we're not going to be able to, to go through the full um, a full suite of, uh, of tools, but, we, but I do think there are some key points that we can, we, can, uh, we can show you today that you can implement immediately today um, in some of your, your existing work or work that you're, 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 you're considering going forward. So in preparation for this, um, I figured I'd do a quick Google search uh, for innovation um, just to, to see what the, the broad... Um, space looks like. So um, a Google search will give you about 1.7 billion hits for innovation in less than a second. So we're obviously a very, very innovative um, species. Um, however, that becomes a little less helpful when we look at how it's um, how it's defined. So even below, we've got some definitions from, uh, from Oxford uh, Dictionary. Um, and <laughs> they unfortunately define innovation as the action or process of innovating, which is less than helpful um, and slightly circular in its in its definition. So, one of the I suppose key challenges or first challenges um, in talking about innovation is aligning people on what it is exactly we are speaking to. Um, I mean, if we were to throw open the the chat panel and ask people to 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 input what they felt innovation was, uh, we would get a lot of uh, a lot of responses. Most of which would probably touch on an aspect of it. Um, and this is something that we have internally um, looked at and, and I suppose turned a few times. Um, and if you take nothing else from this morning's um, conversation, at least take a working definition of innovation that has stood up to, to some scrutiny. Um, and for us, that is um, innovation is executing an idea which addresses a specific challenge and achieves value for the customer. Um, and pretty much every, every word in this holds weight. Um, so this differentiates it from research, which probably uh, doesn't have the requirement for execution. Um, it removes it from blue sky exploration, which doesn't have a specific challenge. And it ties it to uh, the, the delivery of value to the customer. Um, so this is the, 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 I suppose, the working definition for innovation that, that we would typically um, fall back on uh, whenever, whenever we're, we're, we're considering some of these things. Um, and another topic of, of conversation when we are talking about some of the, the, the nomenclature, when we speak of challenges, um, 
it is either an opportunity or a problem. So, so sometimes we we can we can kind of align the the word challenge with problem, but it can uh, equally represent an opportunity uh, for the for the customer. So please kind of interpret that language um, broadly and frame it as a problem or an opportunity. Um, and Adrian, you have some experience. Um, delivering and uh, and executing to to customer um, customer value, so you have you have some some pointers in this regard. Indeed, Ken. I suppose when we all look at a, a challenge, uh, and today everything is framed around projects, um, and how do we incorporate that challenge into a into a project? Uh, so. And project success uh, does not always guarantee product success. And this is a key message that we want to get, get across, uh, that you can deliver a very successful project, but ultimately fail with your product. And the question is, why? Why does this happen? Why at the end of the day, we put all this effort into defining the project, making sure it's done and, and, and completed, uh, quite often under uh, time constraints and very strict time constraints, but ultimately the product will fail. And one of the reasons why is innovation. We want to make innovation is the project itself. We're all very um, familiar with the traditional triple constraints of time uh, on cost and within scope to help deliver the project. And sure, that, that quite often works, but when you look at an innovation as the project, you've got to look at how innovation uh, impacts the product and the project. And at the start of that, where you're innovating a new idea or application, what impact or what customer value is that going to bring? Because you need to spotlight the, the value to the customer. And when we talk about a customer, we don't mean necessarily the consumer at the very end. A customer can be your internal customer within an organization or a value stream. So your customer is the person who's using the product uh, or the application on your production line in your manufacturing facility. And it's critical that that happens from the very start of your project. Without that, you're not going to get any um, success uh, within your project. So what we're saying is, Innovation is the project itself. Um, and the goal of innovation within a project is to add that value. Um, quite often, um, a, a project starts with a solution already in mind. So jumping straight to this solution space too quickly can often stifle innovation. So where do you start? You start back at what Ken was saying, the challenge, how you frame your challenge. And really around frame that challenge, it's, it's not necessarily the technology that you need to look at, but also the people. The people are at the heart of the actual the challenges because you're trying to solve their challenges to make their add value at the end of the day. So the stakeholders are very, uh, all your stakeholders should align to the challenges. So not just your challenges, but they, everyone in the production process are on all the stakeholders, right from uh, the design, the innovation uh, to the production and the uh, the supply chain, they're all uh, uh, identified as players uh, on the, uh, in, in the project. So where do we, uh, what do we do when we get to include these stakeholders? So what you need to do is, is, is focus on delivery of business value and innovation versus requirements management. So don't just look at the requirements uh, you've got to look at where the business value and innovation can be incorporated in that, like the previous Venn diagram, to ensure that success is, uh, is achieved. So view your challenges holistically. And what we mean by that, understanding what are the likely impacts to the entire business, the ecosystem of people, the process, the organizations, rules, data, applications, the technologies. So again, take a very holistic view of the challenges then you've got to embrace innovation and design. And that's really to soften the lines between complexity and uncertainty. So they, they, that full process, uh, 
the, the technology and innovation shouldn't be seen as a barrier uh, to implementing the project or finding the solution, but it's, a, it's an enabler. And then strike a balance between analysis, intuition, order and disruptive change that that that's that's critical so that you get that balance between um well i my what my gut feeling is telling 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 me but also do look at the uh, data and then the analysis uh, for when you when you're looking at innovation and how what value it can bring really what what we're saying is don't just innovate for the sake of it look at the value look at the objectives at the end what you're trying to achieve, uh, what your customer needs. Then th this is a, it's quite an old cartoon. And just that I throw it in there when I seen it first, it was actually in black and white. But I suppose it does illustrate a misalignment between all the players, the stakeholders involved. You know, uh, the customer had one idea. Uh, it was, and how he explained it was picked up differently by the designer uh, and the project manager uh, took it as a different, uh, different view altogether. And then through the project costs were added and the customer was billed and was probably uh, dis, dis, dissatisfied with what he really wanted. At the end, the end of the day, it was really a swing. But I suppose when we look at what was brought here to the table, the, the value to the customer was to bring joy and happiness, whether it be for himself or for themselves or their child uh, to play in a swing, to move back and forward. But the innovation was really taking uh, something that was designed for a different purpose, what the really customer needed in this case was the tire. It was completely designed for a different purpose, but applying new thinking uh, and developing something new uh, that delivered value. So that, that, that's what uh, this little cartoon and story tells. And uh, again, I suppose Ken probably has, has some suggestions on how to avoid uh, this drastic misalignment that's shown in the cartoon. Okay. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Adrian. So, um, yeah, so look, I suppose the message to, to, to this point is problems arise where there is where there is misalignment um, between either you your stakeholders or some some sub subset of those um, and often problems start where a customer comes with a with a request for uh, for a piece of work to be done and that is taken as the starting point um, so so the as with the paradigm shift that we would like to what well, would like people to to take on board is to rather than frame the solution which in this case is what is what's happening we frame the challenge and a to a very useful tool to allow us to do that is simply the customer challenge statement um and this is a very simple structure um it can be difficult and iterative to get it to get it right, uh, but if you can get it right, then you are looking at the world from your customer's perspective, and all sorts of opportunities open up for you. So, so this is a, a key tool in allowing you to um, to to frame an ask in the in the correct way, so that you can approach it. From the, from the best angle possible. So basically it is, I believe customer X needs a way to do Y, but or because Z. And it's, it, it's simply that, and you fill, you fill in the blanks. It's, it, it's easy as you see it on the screen. It can be more difficult to actually put on paper. So one thing I would encourage everyone to do coming out of this, uh, this webinar is to sit down with a piece of paper and consider a piece of work that you're doing and frame it in this way and see whether you can frame it in this way. Um, now, to help that, um, this uh, is supported by a, cost, uh, by a challenge diagram, which is essentially a sketch of what you believe the problem to be or the, the challenge to be. Um, and I suppose to, to help frame all of this, I'm going to give a quick example of, uh, of a, a real world 
um, scenario that we were we were faced with a number of years back. So a customer came to us. Um, they had a problem, um, but they came, but but their approach to us was in the form of a request. So they wanted a, a very fine. Uh, manipulation process to be automated, um, and that was that was their their approach to us that they wanted us to look at it as the robotics and automation team to to ultimately automate this process or at least a large element of it. So we we started the conversation with them, um, and r- rather than jump into okay, how do we automate this thing, uh, we f- we framed. And we, we we framed their challenge in this in this in this format. And where we came to after after some back and forth was was the following. Okay, this is obviously an anonymized version of it, but it, it basically uh, holds the, the the value. So, in this case, Joe Blogs in Acme Engineering needs a way to reduce ergo strain on his workforce during fine manipulation operations because his highly skilled workforce in, is experiencing fatigue driving absenteeism. Now, this is a much more powerful framing than can you automate X? Uh, because what this does for us is it opens up um, a whole field of possible solutions because now we know what we are actually trying to achieve and why and what the real problem is underpinning this now automation is a possible solution absolutely um but supporting this then there was a a a slightly more advanced uh, diagram but this uh, equally in the in the interest of this presentation captures the, the the essence of it um and what we did was we validated this with the customer. So we went back and we we basically had them red pen this um, until it was until it was cracked. A, a, a tip in terms of doing that is don't go in with a don't validate some of this stuff with a, you know a very well framed and well drawn out and uh, you know architecturally um, sketched diagram. Go in with something rough and ready because the customer will feel much more open to 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 changing and updating and correcting it in that frame. And ultimately, what you want that challenge statement to do is to reflect what the the customer really thinks. So if you can get a validated challenge statement supported by a diagram, then you're halfway to identifying what the the customer really needs. Now, in this case, uh, it turned out that to solve the problem above, the best way to do it wasn't actually to stick a a robot in and automate the the, the process. It was actually to, uh, when we got into it, it was to, to, um, allow them to identify what elements needed to be um, manipulated more quickly, because it turned out that a lot of the the, the pressure and focus the, of the operators was actually being spent on trying to identify uh, elements that needed to be manipulated. So this brought us down a different path and ultimately a more effective path around which we could then frame the proper uh, project. Get to the point where you have framed your customer's challenge and you have that validated with them rather than jumping in and um, framing the solution. This will give you immeasurable, um, immeasurably greater probability of success at the outcome um, as opposed to channeling your all of your attentions in one direction. Now, in a typical innovation workflow, what you will have is you'll have multiple uh, challenge statements. Um, and, uh, and I'm sure anyone on the line here could walk their factory floor and identify multiple challenge statements. The question then is, which of these will actually move the dial for your customers? Um, and a very quick way to do that is, as I've said, first validate it. So they need to be valid challenge statements. But then in terms of at least as a starting point, extracting the wheat from the chaff, we would um, advocate using a tool which plots the importance of a challenge statement to to your identified customer and 
their satisfaction with the current status quo. So, for example, if you've identified a challenge statement that is um, perhaps, you know, it, it, it's a real problem, but it's a corner case for them. And really, they only come across it once a month or once every six months. It's probably not going to factor very high in their in their world in terms of importance. And if that's the case, you're unlikely to get their attention. And so driving a, a piece of work um, around that is going to be an uphill battle. Uh, and ultimately, it's not really what, what your, your identified customer cares about. The other, the other aspect then is how satisfied are they with the status quo? So it may well be, a, be, be, be something of high importance, but you know what? It's good enough for them. Um, and they individually or personally aren't motivated to, uh, to, to change it. You may identify the challenge uh, and you may see that it's, you know, it's even costing, costing money for your org, but if you can't get the engagement of the, the key people uh, because they have, for whatever reason, sat, they're satisfied with how things are, then again, it's probably not worth you focusing your initial attentions on. So the selection then becomes these challenges that hit up here. So low, low satisfaction, high importance. This will give you your portfolio of what are called worthy challenges. And at least what you've got here is you have a capture of projects, potential projects that will at the very least uh, um, drive value if solved. Um, now, Next step in this is to quantify that and to, to become and, and to refine that portfolio, um, but we won't get into that today. Um, we don't have we don't have time. In terms of what we've covered today, then at least take away a working definition of what innovation is, as distinct from you know operations, which perhaps you know don't bring a new idea, but uh, but they're they're uh, but they, they may well bring value or research, which brings a, a new idea, but doesn't focus on execution and delivery. Frame the challenge, not the solution, because this will set you up for success and it will help you identify um, what the real challenges are and why your customer wants to fix them. Um, and ultimately will, will serve as the pointer in terms of how you, how you invest your time and support that with the challenge diagram. The, the advantage of the diagram here is that as in Adrian's example, you get to see everything in one shot. You don't, you're not trying to describe something piece by piece. Your customer can see it all in one go and they can more easily um, understand what's in your head and communicate what's in theirs. And then validate with your customer and identify where they have low, low levels of satisfaction and high importance um, challenges. So... This was a, I suppose a whistle stop tour on some initial tools that you can implement and use today. Um, but obviously their effective use requires um, a lot more uh, depth and, uh, and, and information. And to that end, uh, Adrian has, has something he'd like to talk to you about. Thank you, Ken. Uh, great uh, talking about uh, the opportunities that uh, innovation uh, and identifying your challenges. So at IMR, we're very excited. We've developed a new course uh, and it's innovation through robotics. But what we've taken is the innovation framework that we slightly uh, touched on there this morning and put it into the context of robotics and automation. Uh, where where it's, it's delivered on a, a blended learning platform. So we're not uh, asking people to put a, a uh, take up a lot of their time. It's a uh, self-paced uh, and it involves some online interactive uh, learning, which in itself is actually quite innovative. Uh, so it's not just a, a, a series of videos and uh, PowerPoint presentations developed uh, in, in IMR, but it's uh, interactive and it's actually uh, quite exciting when you go through it, you can active interactive questions to answer and over the course of the, the, the period of the course. It's broken down over, I say, over four weeks. Uh, there's some virtual classrooms every week. Uh, also, we do intend to have uh, an on-site lab session uh, in Mullingar. Uh, and 
a, it will give you 37 hours of a CPD hours towards your um, professional development. A, the online interactive, it's self-paced. So there's also content and reading content that we uh, direct you towards in, in, in the course. But I suppose the really the, the pointers of the course where we're looking at is introduction to innovation. So we just touched on it today, uh, identifying the opportunity. And again, that that is critical, especially for someone starting off on a journey in automation or organization starting on a journey in automation in robotics, because we all probably uh, gravitate towards the biggest problem and the biggest challenges that are going to be solved um, with the biggest bang, but they might not be the ones that's going to give you the most impact. And impact can also be gauged on, well, what is the confidence of success as well, particularly if you're starting on a new project. And I know it's a, it's a, it's a common cliche, pick the low hanging fruit first, but believe it or not, many people go for the big, uh, the big bang. And it does happen that, that uh, there are failures. There's been many instances where multi-million projects in automation have been uh, uh, delivered but ultimately it didn't uh, actually make the product, so the product failed. Um, and that's, uh, and that we, we, we bring that into the, into the context of the course. We look also at the, some of the technology we've seen, vision, uh, robotics, building the business case, uh, implementing a project, and also at the, at the end of the project, how you define success in the project. And again, a critical, you want to be able to look back at the project uh, and say, well, actually, yes, it was successful. But if you don't define that at the very start, uh, how, how you're going to measure that success, uh, it's difficult to actually put the metrics on it at the very end. So there's uh, some more information available on our training webpage, uh, imr.ie, and there, and there is a training button there. You get more information on it. Um, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for your time this morning. And I think Gary is going to open the floor for any questions and comments. Yeah, we're, we're tight on time, but thanks very much, Adrian, and thanks, Ken. That was great stuff. Ken, I think this is for you. What if the customer knows what they want and they just want you to deliver it or they just want me to deliver it? Uh, yeah, sure. so look, this is a pretty standard starting point um, for a lot of conversations, certainly that in our experience and, and I'm sure in, in that of the, the folks online. Um, I suppose the, in that scenario, uh, if there is, um, you know, if there is no particular risk on on delivery if there is no particular um question around whether or not it'll it, it'll it'll deliver value then that would probably fall into probably fall out of the space of, a, of an innovation project that's not to say it wouldn't deliver value um the question is or the the the, the danger is one of the kind of key gaps uh in terms of in terms of having a, a project deliver an effective outcome, is that what a customer um, per perceives as their or what a customer thinks they want is sometimes not aligned with what they actually need, and what is communicated is again sometimes an abstraction away from away from that. So there are a couple of things. Right at that first, um, at that first um, interaction, that assume things, uh, certain things are correct, um, and they may not always be. So again, I would be inclined to to try and bring it back to that challenge statement and validate that, and at least then you have a basis for understanding the the validity of the the the, the question or the ask or the request um, from the customer. Excellent. And we've got two more and I'm going to merge them in and Adrian, they're for you. Who is the program, the course most useful for, or also who in my company would benefit most from taking the course? Okay, great question. Um, I suppose we've, we've made this uh, course that is a uh, compatible with a lot of needs within an organization. So who, who are we targeting? Engineers, 
both uh, design engineers, automation engineers, product development engineers. Uh, it's not just about the technology and the that we're touching on. That's actually quite a light touch in the course. It's around innovation process and making the business case. Um, and again, the the impact or the, the area within the company, it could even uh, service the health and safety department or your your HR department even may well, may well like to ha have a view on it as well because it, robotics and automation is touching on the whole point of industry 4.0. And again, that's a com commentary for another day, but it's the, the biggest question is, where do I start? How do I start when I'm looking at either an I-4 journey or an automation journey? And this is really, uh, this course will help that. And it will it will answer questions by all people in, in the organizations. And again, in an SME, uh, an MD wanting to learn about uh, robotics and automation, it, uh, it will um, inform them on the new technologies. But again, uh, in the context of delivering value uh, and impact to the application. Excellent. Thank you, Adrian. And thank you all for joining. Uh, we are gone a couple of minutes over, so apologies for that. Uh, we have got two more webinars coming up this month, so just check out our social media uh, channels for those, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks again. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. All the best. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button in the corner for more IMR videos on how we demystify de-risk and deliver emerging technologies for advanced manufacturing. Thank you.